So welcome back. Um, we're going to start our final session now, about an hour long, and then there'll be some chance for networking at the end. I hope you enjoyed your workshops. We had a really good session in here, a lot of people in the room um, getting some really good advice. And what struck me, actually, is just chatting in that group and on the tour as well, is dotted around this room, there's some incredible projects all ready to go in various stages of development, all with people with different problems to be solved and things to think about. And the nice thing about these types of events is we're sharing the knowledge, we're making the connections, you know, the mistakes you make, don't have to do it alone. They've probably already been made somewhere else before you do it, so we must keep in touch at the end of all this, which is great. Okay, so we'll kick off straight away with our next keynote speaker, and this is with um, Councillor Patrick Harley. Um, Pat Patrick is um, the leader of Dudley Council, and he's been a massive advocate for, for VLR and the, the National Infrastructure Centre here right from day one. So, Patrick, I'd like to invite you to the stage, please. Okay, thank you very much for that uh, kind inv in invite, Corin. I'll keep it short and sweet. Uh, as I've said to colleagues, I think we, we've got the graveyard shift. This is the, this is the part where we look and we just see those, those glazed over eyes after a good, good lunch. Um, it is great to be here. You know, the black country was at the heart of the first industrial revolution. And we're now here again on the dawn of a second one with rail and uh, public transport innovation. And it's great to be part of that. Uh, and you've had all the technical speak uh, before lunch. Uh, but the hard reality is, although it's great to see that building almost complete, I have to tell you, it has been an absolute battle to get where we are. You would not believe the arguments, the fights, um, the arms round shoulders, knives in the back. That, and that's just with my own political group. Uh, <laughs> never mind the opposition. In fact, the opposition have been more helpful. Um, it has been a tremendous journey from trying to have the concept of very light rail and the innovation center as an idea. And, and, and I pay tribute to some of our predecessors uh, on the opposition benches who when they were in control had this idea uh, along with Nick and one or two others. Uh, and at the very start there was a huge funding shortfall so over the last eight or nine years, it has been a constant battle to get that funding. And almost when we thought we had the funding, it was threatened to be dragged away from us right at the last minute as Nick was appointing contractors to start digging big holes in where we now see this fantastic building. So it has been an uphill struggle to get where we are. But it's been well worth the sleepless nights the toil and hardship, it's been absolutely well worth it. Uh, because what we have now is putting not only Dudley, but the wider black country and the West Midlands region, not only on a national platform, but on an international platform. And I'm extremely proud that Dudley, working alongside Coventry, is able to do this for our region. And it shows the importance also, I think, of, of the working as a combined authority. I've never seen seven councils pull together, and they all pull together to get what I call the generic money after towards the end of the first lockdown, where Dudley had probably the largest share of that generic cash, which we used to plug that final funding gap for very light rail. And that was done with the collaboration of seven uh, West Midlands councils and a, quite a, even amongst the same party lines, they are a very odd bunch. And they don't agree on party lines. So to get seven councils from different parties to agree, that is an absolute achievement. And that shows the strength of a combined authority and us all working together for this region of ours, the West Midlands. We will continue to support Nick and his team here at uh, Very Light Rail. We'll continue to bang the drum locally. And I would ask delegates to spend a little bit of time visiting some of our great attractions, having a look at our ambitious one billion pound regeneration plans. And uh, please come back in a year or two's time as the Metro completes, as the uh, uh, 
university complex where the Hippodrome now casts quite a gloomy shadow over the new uh, innovation building when that's gone and we start to build the foundations of a really bright new future, not just for this borough, but for the whole of the black country and the wider West Midlands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Uh, um, we have a wide range of partners working on this project, and one of the key partners is um, Transport for West Midlands for us. And our next keynote speaker is Sandeep Shingardia, who's Director of Development and Delivery for Transport for West Midlands. Sandeep. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'm glad that the, the height of this podium is, is suitable, because I normally struggle with this sometimes. So, um, um, but it's great to be speaking here in Dudley. And um, as, as Councillor Harley said, there is a long history of working with the Combined Authority and Transport for West Midlands, not just around VLR, but some big transport improvements that are happening, the Metro, Dudley Interchange, all of these coming together to actually support the regeneration of Dudley over the next few years. And as a child, I've got very fond memories of the Black Country Living Museum and Dudley Zoo too. So I wanted to start with a, a, a bit of a quote, really. Um, and I know it's after lunch, but it's nothing heavy going, I promise you that. But um, Gustavo Petro, the mayor of Bogota, said, a developed country is not where the poor have cars. It's where the rich use public transportation. And there are two really important things here. Firstly, Bogota has become very well known for its transport innovation over 20 years ago as it introduced its Transmillennio system. In this case, it's a bus rapid transit, but it set a standard and a blueprint which all of the BRT systems look to. Secondly, it was about having an integrated and reliable public transport system, which is attractive for the end user, making it the first choice for people wanting to use public transport. And for me, those two elements are very common with what is happening with very light rail here in the West Midlands, innovation and integrated transport. And there is an, an immense amount of interest in, in very light rail. I mean, testament is that just the people around this room come from all across the country. Um, so it, it goes way beyond our region. Last week I was at a meeting um, in Glasgow and I was sat next to Councillor Don Alexander, the cabinet member for transport of Bristol City Council. And as soon as I mentioned that I was from the West Midlands, the first thing he asked me was about very light rail and something that they're really interested in and keen to learn from. And no doubt many of you sat here today will be wanting to do the same. As a bit of a backdrop, and apologies, it's always a bit difficult when you speak later on in the day. This Colin and Nicola have probably covered off some of this, but there are a number of new policy agendas driven by a number of challenges that our transport system will have to, have to respond to. We're all well aware we have a climate emergency, and the, the West Midlands Combined Authority declared that climate emergency with a very clear standard um, to become carbon neutral by 2041. And it is a big challenge, as transport is one of the biggest contributors to, to carbon, um, and that's something that we need to keep on working at. There's already been talk earlier today about air quality, and we have very poor air quality, and that is linked to transport. And it is damaging to people's health, and COVID has highlighted this even further. We're currently going beyond legal limits in many parts of the region, and Birmingham has had to introduce a clean air zone to tackle that. The other part of it is more about the opportunity. So we've got future growth. We know that the West Midlands population is continuing to grow. Nicola and Colin spoke about how Coventry is continuing to grow earlier on. We need to ensure that our transport system can support every resident and every visitor to get where they need to be by the most appropriate, sustainable, fair, and equitable ways possible. On funding and investments, we need to ensure that we make the most of funding opportunities. And again, working at a combined authority level allows us to make a strong case for that funding to deliver what we need to do. And we must put those efforts in to level up across the region. And of course, talking about innovation here, it has to be said, but developing and adapting to new and future technologies and ensuring our infrastructure is ready for these changes is going to be crucial. With our significant history in transport, we want to make sure we're at the forefront of any changes and gain the most for our economy and workforce. VLR already forms part of the local transport plan, Movement for Growth, and in our Emerging Green paper, Reimagining Transport in the West Midlands, which was published last summer, it's about engaging and making sure that we've got the right conversations going. But again, it forms a key part of that going forwards. The City Region Sustainable Transport Settlement, that really rolls off the tongue, uh, for the West Midlands includes a mechanism for funding to support Coventry um, and development of very light rail. 
And again, our role and Transport for West Midlands' role in that is about bringing some of that expertise in, both from the development of very light rail and light rail schemes, but also the operation of our existing metro network. So why is very light rail important to Transport for West Midlands and the combined authority? It will form part of an integrated transport network and it will form part of a wider vision for the West Midlands Rapid Transit Network. As we've heard today, potentially it's a lower cost alternative to existing metro systems, an alternative to other bus-based modes. It will support the modal shift and the decarbonisation we need to see across transport. And we'll have the potential to operate in tighter spaces than the existing metro due to the size of the vehicles and its tighter turning radius. The track system itself may provide future opportunity for application subject to fur further research. So it's absolutely great to see all the collaboration between the partners to move this innovative transport solution through from development and into delivery. And it's been great to see the amazing conversations that have been taking place today from the very technical aspects right through to the more strategic and obviously having a look around uh, the center and seeing the track technology and the vehicle. I hope you've all had a good day and thank you for giving me the opportunity to say a few words. Uh, thank you, Sandy. Um, just remember those people who are tuning in at home, please um, send your questions in for us at vlrquestions at bcimo.co.uk. Our next speaker this afternoon is Anthony Joy, who's Head of Engineering and, and Programmes at BCIMO, and he'll now come to stay to tell us about the key role that this building and BCIMO and the, um, the Very Light Rail NIC will play in the development of a new Very Light Rail industry. Thank you very much. Afternoon, everybody. Um, I think the first thing I'd like to say is I'd like to thank the, the team at uh, BCIMO for really, I've only just recently started and they've really welcomed me in and you know, as a, as a team mayor, it's been really, really good. I'd also like to thank the people who's actually made all this happen, take the concept that we had, the VLR concept uh, a few years ago and then turn it into reality what you've seen today, which is the track the building uh, and etc. So, so what is the role of BCMO? As Nick said earlier, it's a, 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 a not-for-profit research and technology organization. It's been established to grow the market for very light rail in the UK and the rest of the world, support the black country to develop innovation, grow its economy and create wealth. And finally, it's here to launch and manage the very light rail and innovation center that you've seen today. As you can see, there's been a, a huge amount of investment in, the, in the, the building. You know, there's lots of key players here who've um, helped generate the funding to actually put the building up um, and also develop the test track and the test site. There's a further set of funding come in, 12 million through the CRUS funding, um, subject to uh, business case approval, which will hopefully then start filling up the center with uh, capital equipment and engineering and new toys for Tony to play with. Uh, you've seen some of our facilities. Um, so you've seen the, 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 the start of our track going into the tunnel. So if you ever come again, the tunnel's a brilliant thing, uh, 870 meters long. It's lovely cool in the summer and lovely and warm in the winter. So if you ever need to be somewhere warm, it's the perfect place to be. You've seen the engineering hall. Um, it's a big engineering hall, um, 60 meters long by 40 meters wide, um, with, the, with the big crane. So it has the opportunity, uh, has the ability to um, help develop, um, engineer, maintain, create uh, all types of um, very light railway vehicles. You've seen the charger um, by the, the by the workshop, and we've talked about how that's um, you know critical to the development of VR a very light railway uh, infrastructure in terms of being able to have um, zero emission vehicles. And then you all heard my speech about the 15 metre radius leap, loop, so I won't go into that one again. As I mentioned, we're going to have this CRUS funding, uh, which will hopefully come along in the, the very near future. And then from that CRUS funding, we'll be able to put capital equipment into the building. Um, go on the next one. Um, uh, back up to, I think. <laughs> 
Okay, yeah. So, thank you. Um, so, yeah, as said, there'll be a number of research labs in the, in the building, um, which the capital equipment will then fund equipment to go into those, those laboratories. You know, critical to, you know, key one is digital technologies. We'll also have the Civil Engineering Innovations Lab, uh, 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 labs for developing powertrains, uh, and there's lots of other f uh, facilities that we'll be putting in. And then again, <laughs> thank you. Okay, so what are the themes? And we've really touched on them all today. First is to develop the VLR market. Um, this is why you, you guys are sitting here listening to me and listening to the other um, speakers. So generate a market. There's a big gap, as we've talked about, and hopefully VLL we'll be able to fill that with the VLL market. It's to develop technologies. Um, which is my role in the, in the, in the organisation, um, such as autonomous driving, um, very light structures, all the things that we've um, talked about, including the slab track and, and getting that out on the, on the loop as we've talked about when we're walking around. Um, very much we need to support the VR supply chain, so especially in the black country, which is obviously our um, critical uh, SMEs, but obviously all the way through the Midlands and all the way through the, the, you know, the, the rest of the, the UK. And hand in hand with developing the supply chain is to develop the workforce that will work in that supply chain. So we want the supply chain to get VLR ready, so they'll be ready for actually being able to supply and develop, provide services to the VRL markets. Uh, and they'll need a workforce for doing that, and that's the, uh, one of the themes. So, touching on a little bit more detail, um, you, the, uh, as, as I mentioned in terms of the market, um, it's to create the advice center that we've been talking about, and hopefully people will be able to use in the very near future to look at how um, we develop feasibility studies, how we support the, uh, our, uh, our partners in terms of bringing forward uh, opportunities for putting in VRL systems, uh, um, systems in an impartial uh, in way. Develop that user community, get you guys together in the same room so that you can all speak to each other and start working off each other and giving each other ideas. Uh, and then implement the support program. I touched on a little bit in terms of the technologies again. We obviously got the research and development projects we will have, a number of them. Um, demonstration test programs, so the Compture vehicle is a perfect example of that in terms of being able to demonstrate the technology. Hopefully in the very near future, you, know, you as visitors will be able to come back again and be able to ride the vehicle, spend some time in the vehicle, understand a little bit better about the vehicle. Um, also, we obviously have the test track, we have the tunnel, um, we will have other facilities which we want to hire out and support SMEs, support anybody doing innovation when it comes to very light rail or connected. Uh, and then we've got centre membership. As I, as I, as I mentioned, um, we need to get suppliers ready to be able to supply to this uh, very light railway uh, marketplace. We need to bring them up in terms of developing their innovation muscle, start getting them to link in together to, so they, they can be part of the future and first not have to source components, systems from outside the UK. Um, we want to bring them together, we want to develop them so that there's a marketplace that we can then, when these vehicles get developed, we can then use that that um, supply base to actually manufacture the vehicles, hopefully not very far from where we're standing here. And as I mentioned, hand in hand with that goes the workforce. You know, we're standing in a great um, college in terms of developing young people, giving them the skills, and hopefully we will be able to build on those skills, those basic skills, to be more specific for the very light railway industry the supply base, the service industries, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and we're also planning to do a, an innovation leadership program. 
So bringing this all together, this is Olivia's slide. She loves this slide. This is her favorite slide. And this brings all of the elements together, the public transport of the future, the transport technology of the future, supply chains of the future, and the workforce of the, fu of the future, all bringing it into one building, which will be the VLR center, but also being able to have a one-stop shop is one of the Nick's favorite uh, um, phrases, so that anybody who wants to, you know, put in a VLR system or be able to supply into it or be able to develop some technologies or want to get some people uh, develop their, their workforce of skills can come to us and, and work for that and do that. So I think that might be it. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Tony. Um, now I'm going to invite um, Andy Stamps, uh, National Head of Infrastructure at RLB, and Julian Mason, Director of Engineering Integration, up to stage, and we're going to talk about the, the planned role of the VLR Advice Centre and why they want to be involved in that. So if you'd like to come and grab a seat at the microphone. Thank you. Um, do you want to introduce yourself and a little bit about your job, that's okay? Uh, yeah, my name's Andy Stamps, um, National Head of Infrastructure at RLB. And as you can see from the slide, I've only got one suit and I've got a yellow shirt and a green shirt and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but the nice suit and nice shirt, so you're okay. <laughs> and that's it, it's Houston. Yeah, good afternoon, my name's Julian Mason. I'm Engineering Director at uh, Engineering Integration. Um, I've only got one suit by the looks of things. <laughs> I didn't bother with a tie today though, that's because of the, the climate. But uh, yeah, so um, I uh, run engineering integration and we provide lead engineering resource into the rail sector. Brilliant, thank you very much. And I'll start with you. Um, so why are you interested in, in, in VLR and, um, and what, are, what are your reasons for being involved? I think there's a number of facets to this. Um, we started out on VLR by being appointed by Coventry City Council. Um, we've been helping them for around four years now in uh, sort of a commercial capacity. And we're also working for Dudley on the facility that everybody's been around today. But I met Nick Mallinson about three years ago, once met, never forgotten. And um, it, it just struck me instantly the, the kind of the uh, potential for VLR. Um, you know, it's, a, it's a more than a viable solution. Um, it's got so much going for it in terms of its relative affordability, um, its environmental and economic uh, benefits um, but we like the fact that um, it was about you know aiding regeneration in some of our local towns and cities um, and it just fitted what RLB are about we're a, an organization that headquartered in Birmingham and founded there by uh, David Bucknell's father in 1947 so it just it just fitted with us on so many levels to be honest with you and, and Julian the same question to you why, why are you interested in VLR and Yes, the, our initial interest in VLR was spawned um, by being introduced by, to the uh, Siren Sester VLR project team and we were given the opportunity to prepare the uh, feasibility study for that project. Um, that project has now moved on. Um, we've taken it uh, jointly to SOBC stage. Um, that was partially funded by the Restoring Your Railways initiative and now we're moving on to hopefully um, complete the outline business case for the project. Um, Richard Gunner and his team are here today. Um, hopefully people have managed to speak to him and it's, um, it's through him really that engineering integration has, has, has taken a great interest in very light rail. Um, also um, our interest was further um, uh, developed by attending the Warwick University presentation um, or conference um, some years ago um, where I was introduced to Nick and his team and, uh, and then obviously the um, innovation centre itself. So it's, um, it's, it's something that engineering integration have been focused on throughout the evolution of um, the development of, of our business, uh, particularly mass transit systems, looking at heavy rail, light rail and also now uh, very light rail. 
Okay, and, and Andy, very specifically about the, the VLR Advice Centre. Um, do you want to say a few words about what the Advice Centre is and um, what you see your role in it? In it? Yeah, I think uh, Anthony's just touched on some things that, that were really important to us uh, that, that might wanted us to, to get involved in this. It's about the impartiality. Um, you know, we want to give good impartial advice to anyone that comes to, to sort of see us that's thinking about uh, a transportation solution. Um, there aren't, there is not a prescribed response. The, the answer isn't what we're really good at. The answer is what's going to suit that client and that community and its needs. Um, and again, that's that sort of fitted with our long-term objective. You know, at RLB, we provide professional com commercial and program and project management services. But what we want to do is is build a better future and, and actually. Um, as professionals, when you eventually sort of stop doing what you're doing, you want to leave some sort of legacy behind you. Uh, and these kind of facilities and, um, and trying to have these positive impacts is, is really what we're all about. So again, it was, it was a no-brainer for me for us to get wholeheartedly involved in the advice centre. Brilliant. Um, and, and, and Julian, what, what do you see your role in the advice centre as well? Fundamentally, our role is infrastructure. Um, and looking at the overall costings and um, the capex and opex um, uh, reviews of, the, of individual projects, um, I think we've got the vehicles. Um, vehicles can be utilised across numerous projects, um, but the infrastructure is probably unique to each con each um, project that we visit. Um, so what we would look to do is provide a service where we would go in, have a look initially at any showstoppers that could potentially stall a project or jeopardize a project, and then actually take that project from there on in um, and, and assist with the development of that project uh, through feasibility, business case, and then hopefully um, support uh, as client representative uh, right the way through the design and construction phase. It's, um, VLR is just such a, a fantastic opportunity for us to reduce um, emissions into the atmosphere and I think uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strategy that we've got, or a philosophy that we've, we've really all got to look at and develop. Okay, thank you. And um, both of you, really, I mean, what, what do you think are the key benefits for potential clients to, to use the advice centre? I, I think, um, you know, we've talked about the independence. Um, I, I think helping clients from day one avoid wasting time and money and effort. Um, there's a lot to navigate. Um, you know, I'm sure Nicola and, and Colin would uh, would tell anybody that it's it's hard work. It's a it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, so I think if if we can help clients up that learning curve, I think if we can um, get get smarter as we progress, um, build confidence with you know organisations like the DFT, and just through each iteration make it a, a smarter and a better outcome. Um, I think that's what we're what we're really about is trying to put people, no pun intended, on the right track, uh, but but to but to try and um, share the learning. Brilliant, Julian. I guess you'd agree with all that. Uh, definitely, yes. Um, uh, just to reiterate Andy's point, really, it's 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 giving that independent advice and allowing us to uh, work together and get to, uh, a, a significant VLR project in the ground and operational. And as soon as we get a project up and running and um, we've demonstrated that um, it is viable, it is cost effective, um, and uh, the projects wash their face, it's, um, it's definitely the way to go. Um, and then also there's all of the knock-on um, um, project develop or product development associated with it, with the autonomy, um, uh, driverless vehicles, um, different types of track formation, slab track, um, reducing the maintenance costs of the projects, etc., etc. One thing that we found with uh, Simon's Hester VLR was when we went to the investors, they, they, they came back to us and said, well, in your OPEX, why do you keep having these big maintenance spikes? And we said, well, we're replacing the track infrastructure every 30 years. And they said, well, can't we bring that money forward and actually provide some sort of way of um, a more long-term solution? And uh, in, that, uh, in that context, we actually then looked at providing slab tracks throughout from end to end, and um, that gave the investors the confidence that they could bring that money, the investment in TrackSlab into the, the CapEx and then spread the cost evenly 
um, across the life of the project. Brilliant. And um, how do people get in contact? Um, we've got a, um, a website, uh, engineeringintegration.net, um, and also through uh, BCMIO. And, uh, I think Olivia needs to be the first port of call, doesn't she? Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Um, we'll share all those details at the end, but thank you very much, everyone. Okay, if you two stay where you are. Um, all the speakers from the third session, if you want to come back up on stage for some questions and answers. Okay, um, same rules apply. If there's anybody at home and you want to email us still with a question, I've got my phone email just on right in front of me, I can see. Um, anybody in the audience, stick your hand up. Um, we've actually got a microphone now, so if you're shy, we'll hear you. If you just want to sing, it's the end of the day, and no one's going to complain about that. But we've got a question just at the back here, that's okay. This looks like a Sinatra fan here, so we could be getting it. Shall I press? I got hold in. All oh, right. Okay. Sorry. And would you introduce I, yourself first of all? That's okay. I promise not to sing. Okay. Uh, Chris and Moulton, I'm director of Ultralight Rail Partners. We've recently built the world's first biomethane tram, uh, and we are set up at Long Marsden at the moment. And we need help as to how to get that into production and to get some of these to adopt it. Uh, do we come to you as your advice centre for that? at this point, or do we carry on battling away with local councils? And, and how much does it cost? <laughs> okay, we'll start with the advice centre, and then Patrick will offer his bullying um, tactics for you as well, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're quite happy to talk to anybody. There's, there's, there's nobody we don't <laughs> want to have a conversation with, and um, if we can help at all, then I'm sure we, we will. Um, yeah, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't. Um, I say we, we, we've got lots of advice and ex or experience and, and that's spawned off a lot of advice that we can give and uh, um, hopefully, well, not too many scars, um, but we do have uh, a, a track record in delivering significant rail projects and it's, um, it's we're all here to, to, to turn uh, this philosophy into a project and that that's what we need to all work towards. And as far as costings go, I guess that depends on the depth of the advice that the, that the clients are going to need. Of course, yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. We have worked on several projects where we've just gone along and done walkthroughs of a scheme and actually picked out uh, significant elements that may cause a problem going forward, certain uh, aspects of the infrastructure that, uh, that we've got to overcome, and we can give that advice as well. Yeah, and, and I would also say one of the remarkable things about this project that struck me after doing these sort of things for years now is that it's the strength of the partnership. So if you are having problems with certain partners, in your local area, I bet you there's someone locally who would be willing to come and present or to talk to those partners to explain why that they've got involved as well. And actually, that often helps alleviate some of the some of the frustrations. Are you are you, are you having a, a few difficulties at the moment? Are you? Yeah. See, it's real being been real problems actually. Yes, we've been doing it for a long time. Um, and we'd, we're, we're at the stage at the moment where basically we spent an awful lot of money. We sympathise with you for all the things you've said about the agro and what goes wrong. We got all through that. The thing works. Um, but how do we then take it forward to the next stage? And I guess trying to place these projects in a non-political fashion that just basically benefits the economy of the local area, aside from all politics, is really, really hard, but a really important one, isn't it? Okay, thank, thank, thank you very much for that. Any more questions or songs? Okay, we're tired. I won't sing. Okay, what I'm going to say is, I, I just have, I just do have just one question. I, we've, we've spoke about so much stuff today, and it's just about the commercial opportunities here. It feels like that we're at the start, or at the end of the start, or the start of the middle part. It feels like there's, a, there's an excitement, a genuine business case here. 
but there's absolutely a commercial opportunity here, isn't there, for, for people in this room to, to, to get involved, for, for the BCIMO, for the Very Light Rail Centre. You know, one of the projects we're speaking to earlier on is not looking for any public finance at all, actually just purely private sector financed um, project as well. So there's clearly a case here. And I just wondered if any of the panel had any ideas of how they felt about this, because it, it feels like sometimes you see things, don't you, and you think, oh, there's a gap in the market here, and we've got a product, and we've got the partnership in place. I just wondered what anyone thought about that. From a test track point of view, um, we've talked to a number of people, and they always say, this is perfect for us. This is exactly what we need. We, we could use this tomorrow, um, because it's a controlled environment. We can do the things that we need to do with it. So we see from a, as a starting point in terms of selling the track, um, facilities and then as the building becomes online and then we add extra equipment in we will then be able to pr provide more services but yeah I've had numerous co conversations and they said yeah this is exactly what we need we need a test track which we can easily access and we can do what we need to do to demonstrate our technology or develop a piece of technology on that so yes yeah, so anybody who's doing any demonstration or, or we always get a positive response from them Brilliant, thank you very much. Go I think uh, we all recognise in this room that we've got, we've got a great uh, philosophy, great idea. Um, I think if we can all work together to get that first project in the ground, uh, working with BTIMO, uh, whether that be Siren Sester, Coventry, Iron Bridge, all of these projects are all on the cusp of, of actually getting over the line. And I think if we can get one project up and running, and then we can demonstrate um, to the greater good that uh, it, it does work, it is cost effective, and then we can take uh, the VLR to, uh, to new heights and uh, it will pay back to us all. Brilliant. Well, one thing we must do is, um, actually we've got a, a great and long history in innovation, particularly yeah. in rail, haven't we? We've also got a bit of a history in not making the best of those opportunities, <laughs> and that's what we've got to do this time. Is we, you're right, there's the, it feels like the opportunity is massive and there's a groundswell. Um, we've got to make sure that we do make, bring this home, as it were, yeah. because um, yeah, we've, we've innovated before and, uh, and like fallen at the last hurdle, and we mustn't do that. We can't, we, for, for our own communities and the like, we can't afford to do that. Yeah, and I think that's a really important. We spoke all day about the, 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 the exporting opportunities, both of the knowledge and of the manufacturing and of the systems. And if we can get that right, it could be a, a great project, isn't it? Thanks, Corin. Just to come in on a couple of points there. So there is an absolute opportunity to look at this, as you say, from a commercial point of view, but the strong commercial case that's inherent within uh, these types of systems. So how does it form part of that future transport system that we want to see in the future? And it was touched on earlier, this is more holistic than just the transport intervention. There is the whole opportunity around the supply chain, the local supply chains that can be built on. And then in tandem with that, it's how do we upskill our local workforces to take on these new skills, manufacturing um, ways of working to make sure we can support that in the right way. Brilliant. Thank, thank you very much. Um, a round of applause for our, our speakers, please. Okay. Our, oh, there's a question right at the back here. Okay. Um, I think in a lot of areas of innovation there's always had to be some public sector money to help prove the concept and get some of that original R&D do work done to generate the interest that you would then get solely from the private sector. I think that's been a, a common trait across not just in transport innovation but on lots of other forms of, of innovation and that's where we come to that difficult point of where do you get this to to make it attractive for that private investment to be levered in but I think history would suggest that generally it's always taken public sector funding to help to get it to a point where that can happen. Other panellists may have a different view. That's a resounding agreement on that one, I think, isn't it? So, Okay, good question. Thank, thank you very, very much. Okay, I'm going to call to stage some key partners now. If you're not one of these, you can run away. If you are one, please don't move. 
Um, I need on stage uh, Dr. Nick Mallinson, Colin Knight, James Meredith, Sam Dinshingardia, please, and I welcome in Councillor Simon Fix to the stage as well. Everybody else, you're free to go. <laughs> Hey Simon, you okay? Yeah, good. Okay, just to tie things up then, these are key partners. You've all got a microphone and you've got two minutes each to make some closing comments from your perspective, if that's okay. Um, I'm going to finish with you, Nick, if that's okay. Simon, I'm going to start with you at that time. Right then. Thank you very much, Corin. Hello everyone, I'm Simon Phipps. I'm the Cabinet Member for Regeneration and Enterprise on Dudley Council. Um, so for me, I've grown up in this borough my entire life. Uh, so sort of like it's quite uh, it's quite um, uh, important really because actually I grew up catching the train over to my local school and college and I caught the train on one of our lightweight solutions which is the Parry People Mover at the Stairbridge Town branch line and now we're branching into this next stage with VLR so it's really really good um, so we're in the IOT which is a testament to the ambition that's been shown by Dudley Council and its partners. Uh, and what we've uh, seen today is that we've got no intention of letting up on that ambition. The VLR, the National Innovation Centre, is a truly unique partnership working with Coventry and Warwickshire. We're going to show the world that what can be achieved when the levers of local government, academia, manufacturing all work in harmony. Millions of pounds have been secured to pump into this project and the fact that the Coventry and Warwickshire LEP have actually invested so much money into that project which is not even within its boundaries just goes to show just how strong those, that partnership working has been and the buy-in that we've had on the project. Um, so the Innovation Centre is also right in the heart of uh, Dudley's new University Park. Um, the Health Innovation Centre, which is going to replace the Hippodrome, that's going to help complete that in a few years' time. And then you've got all three of these uh, buildings and these institutions working together to put us right at the uh, front stage of that innovation. And of course, in order to continue to achieve all that, we wouldn't be able to do it without the other people that have worked with us in order to get us here. The close ties with Coventry, West Warwick Manufacturing Group, Transport for West Midlands, and all the others will help to put this project on the international stage, maximising the benefits that we've heard about today for VLR, from technology through to placemaking, communities, and it will keep, keep us at the cutting edge of innovation. So thanks very much to everybody for coming, and I really hope you've uh, enjoyed your visit to the Dudley Borough, and please do come back, because it's only getting better. And I'll pass on to my colleagues. Thank you. I'll try and replicate that level of excitement. Um, so, um, yeah, for, for me, actually, today is really exciting because it's, it's almost been the culmination of quite a few years of work now. And to come here today and actually see a number of the different systems, the vehicle, the track, BCI mode, the building, everything all coming together has been a really fantastic um, thing to see. And actually, over the next six months, 12 months, you know, two, three years, whatever, it's all going to get better. And... Um, I'd just like to say I think the project is is much bigger than any individual or any individual organisation. So actually for everyone to come together and uh, for all of us to pull something amazing together will be a very Im impressive effort and something that uh, I think we can all be very proud of. Thank you. So I think today has just been a testament of the great partnership working and the collaboration that's already been going on for a number of years to get the, the overall program to where it, where it has got to. And seeing the physical, the vehicles, the centre, the track forms have been a long journey, as people have said, but it's all been part and parcel of that development and gestation of uh, an innovative and new way of transporting people and plugging a gap in what we want to see as an integrated transport system. From the Combined Authority and Transport for West Midlands point of view, this has been for us about how do we help and support the coordination of funding to continue to take this forwards. How do we support on developing those business cases which, which are going to be absolutely important and using the experience and the knowledge and the expertise that we've used across a whole range of transport projects, and I don't need to say that to Colin, as one of the people who worked on our original metro scheme. So, you know, there's a lot of knowledge and experience around the work that we've done already and how do we bring that to the table to make sure we can make the strongest case possible. I've also touched on before the operational advice 
we operate Metro here, a light rail system, there are some common themes that we can take from that to help build into developing not just the commercial cases but the operational cases for very light rail. And more importantly, how do we coordinate this with all the other investment that's going on to make sure we do end up with an integrated transport system across the West Midlands. I'd already touched on some of the other points around the supply chain and the workforce of the future. And again, there are a number of core objectives from the combined authorities' point of view, particularly around the local industrial strategy and the upskilling of our workforce, which again will help shape and bring the project and program forwards. Thank you. Well, it's been fantastic to see so many people here today. It's really, you know, enthusing to see, you know, to feel the, the energy and, you know, the passion for this project. You know, and it's amazing to think, you know, out of a conversation Nick and I had all those <laughs> years ago that we've worked with so many amazing partners and people to get to where we've got to. But we really are just at the beginning of a journey. You know, we've heard the fact it's a marathon, not a sprint. Absolutely it is. You know, and we are committed, you know, to growing this. This is just the start of something, you know. And what we're really after is a game changer. We've heard about the challenges, the existential challenges in many cases that face us. And, you know, if we've got to do things differently. We've got to think differently. And I'm just so pleased and proud to have worked with the people that we've worked with, you know, colleagues at WMG, Traffic, uh, Transport for West Midlands, at Dudley Council, um, you know, Department for Transport, and many of our other partners, you know, who have helped us develop this. On our own, we could never have done it. And, you know, we're just brimful of ideas as to how we want to develop this and how we want to take this forward. This really is just the start. And, you know, we felt so proud yesterday because Nicola and I were privileged to see the vehicle moving and to see it going around the loop doing what it was meant to do. And it is, as others have said, the bringing together of all those elements of our labor over the last five or six years. To see it all coming together here at Dudley, at the BCIMO, is fantastic. So proud to be here today. And please, let's all work together, you know, to create something that's bigger than any of us. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming today because I've been interested in what, I, what is called Very Light Rail uh, for nine years and I've been trying to promote it as something that should be investigated and developed and along the way I've come into contact with a number of uh, fantastic partners. Um, Coventry City Council and Colin and Nicola are, are one of those key partners but um, obviously I, I need to say um, thank you to Dudley Council because they took a vision that I spoke to them about a 10 minute conversation with um, the leader of the council at the time David Sparks and within 10 minutes they said I want that centre here in Dudley and this is fantastic for the future of British transport now, you don't normally think that councils are going to be thinking about the strategic development of technology. Um, so and, and Coventry's the same. Thing. Uh, it's, a c it's a council that is always thinking about how can we do things better. Um, so I just wanted to make that point. I'm very pleased so many people have come today because one of the key things BCIMO has got to do in, with the centre is build up a market very light rail. We're creating a market when there hasn't been a product or a need. It's a bit like the iPhone. Nobody knew that you needed an iPhone until Apple gave us one. Well, I'd like to think in 10 years' time, VLR will be a bit the same. People won't be able to manage without it. Um, but for me, the key thing has been the, the partnerships that have developed over the last nine years. I can't deliver very light rail on my own. WMG have provided tremendous technical input, assisted in technology transfer. Um, Coventry have taken the risk of being a, a leader in trying to take this concept to a proven stage. The Revolution Project, 
has gone all the way from a concept through to something that could be sold next year. So we are on the way. Unfortunately, it's the beginning of the journey. It's not the end of the journey because we've got to build up activity in the innovation centre, make it sustainable. But I hope we can hold a conference like this every year going forwards. We had a conference in 2019 at WMG and then COVID came in and prevented any follow-up. But we've moved on a long way in that past uh, two and a half years. So thank you very much for coming. Please, if you've got any questions, feel free to contact us uh, at VCIMO and we'll do our very best to help you take forward whatever dreams you've got for connected public transport. Thank you. Okay, then, I think it's time to call an end to proceedings. So um, thank you all very, very much for your time. I, I hope you've enjoyed the day. I, I found it in, in incredibly useful. Um, it's such an important time for VLR, as, as our speakers have said, and the wider rail and transport sector in general. With the new Innovation Centre opening soon, we're on the cusp of something really exciting. And, and actually, that's what today's been about, I think, more than anything else. You're in a gang now. We're in a big gang together at the start of this big VLR revolution, aren't we? And wouldn't it be great if this time next year there's another conference and we had a little map of Britain and around that there's some spots on the map about projects that are developing or what stages they're at and they get some updates, maybe have that on a bigger, wider global stage at some stage. We're all part of something special here, something genuinely revolutionary and I think we should all be very, very proud. So the last round of applause today is for yourselves for coming, please. A massive thank you to BCIMO for, for, and partners putting on the event at, at last. At last, it took about three or four goes, didn't it? Particularly Olivia and the team here and, and associate events. Thank you all so very, very much. Um, take it easy getting back. Um, imagine a, a world without traffic. You're, you're, you're there almost, aren't you? Please stay around for a cuppa and some networking. Just get out of this room. Um, we're going to pack this one down. Go in the atrium, sit on those cool little steps, pretend you're the kids from fame. Just enjoy yourselves. Thank you very, very much for coming. Remember, slides will be coming out to you. Um, the day's been recorded, we'll send that round, and a highlights video as well. Contact details will be behind me soon if you want to get in contact. Share the knowledge, share the pain, share the success, and what a network will be. Thank you all very much. <laughs>